Welcome to the Eyes Up Mindset Podcast, where we explore what it means to grow daily and find our best in every aspect of life. Here we go again, Jameson, another episode of the Eyes Up Mindset Podcast. I don't know if people know. Is that your... People know that's your real name? Did I, I just... You dropped uh, breaking news on the podcast. Uh, my my real name, everyone, is Jameson. That is true. I've had a couple of interesting interactions about that recently. Hmm. I just... I, one of... So my sister-in-law's name is also Jamie. And so her husband calls me Jameson. And I was like, you know, that's not really my name. It is my name. It's my legal name. It's the name on my birth certificate, but nobody calls me that. And it's weird to hear somebody call me that um, sometimes. So when you say Jameson, I'm always a little bit caught off guard is what I said to him. And then the other thing is I, I, I introduced myself to somebody in my new hometown and they know me as Jameson because my in-laws and all that family call me Jameson because of my sister-in-law. And he's like, and I said, well, I'm Jamie. And he goes, no, you're Jameson. Jameson's a way cooler name. I don't know why you don't use that. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, unintentional when you roll with it, things happen and good things happen usually. So I appreciate all about that. Stories. You know, it's all about the stories. No lie though. Awesome episode. We get to catch up with uh, one of our college teammates who is now the head football coach at Mounds View High School in Minnesota. And Aaron Moberg is, is just a dude, man. Um, you know, and, and when you know a dude and you call it like, you just know when you hear him, you'll feel it, the energy, the, the genuineness, you know, we had a guy, our, my high school basketball coach on a couple of episodes ago, talk about be real, be authentic, man. Aaron Moberg is both of those things. The thing that stuck with me and I, I, I just cannot emphasize this enough is when he says this, he says, you get what you praise and you get what you emphasize. And like for him, it is so easy to praise because if you know, Aaron, he's got just incredible energy and he gives that to everyone all the time. Some of us aren't like that. We don't just come like with energy to give praise all the time, but remember that in whatever you're doing, parents, spouses, leaders, business, you get what you praise and you get what you emphasize. And so if you bring excitement and energy and praise to something that somebody's kind of like, whoa, why are they so excited about this? They're going to repeat that behavior, you know? And how do we do that? I like it, it, that thing just landed big time for me, especially as a coach, especially as a coach or a leader, the things, the behaviors you want, you better be praising them. No doubt. Um, it's about focus, right? Where, where are we going to focus our attention? You know, because I, even if it's not praise, but if you're focused on all of the negativity, the bad, the, all of the possible barriers, right. Then we're going to, they're going to keep coming up over and over and over. And you don't ever change your culture. You don't change the mindset of yourself, your athletes, your employees, whoever it is. And he talks a lot about a, a ton of stuff that they do and, uh, as far as, you know, outside of football. And I think that's the coolest part of this conversation to me too, is if you're looking for football X's and O's conversation, this is not it because I don't know that we got into any of it any yet. because to us. And if you know this about us you, and you've listened before, or if not, we are not about that. You know, we can talk about that. We love it, but the real stuff is in the relationships, the connections and how you pour into other people. One thing I think needs to be drawn out is he talks about their, their Mustang men Mondays, right? Where they, they take, and he didn't say this, but we asked him afterwards that they take time out of their practice every Monday to talk about character. And so many of us in whatever walk of life, we say that has to just take care of itself. We're going to do all these things. No, you have to be intentional about it. You have to sacrifice something to get the things that you want. And it's not about X's and O's, right? And like he even, he says this, he allows for this reality to be true. It's not necessarily about X's and O's. It's about, we want to be great at that too. Spend the time and get better at that too. Whatever was required of you to be great at your job, get great at it. But understand there's so much more to it. And unless you're giving it time, it's probably eroding and not growing. Mountains View football coach, Aaron Moberg, 
Here we go. Aaron Moberg, head football coach, Mounds View High School, and former teammate of both Jamie and I at Bethel. It's such an awesome uh, thing to be able to see you and catch up. And we did this again, Jamie, and I had to stop you because we, we just got right into the good stuff. But we had to welcome you first, and then we'll hop back into it. Mobs, I don't know what they call you there at Mounds View, but that's the only thing I know you by. So welcome to the pod. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, it's so awesome just to see you guys' faces and and just I been looking forward all day just to to catching up with you guys and and uh, talking talking life is you know what's what's really neat is and I'm, I'm sure you guys have shared this on on previous podcasts, but there's something special about you know going through the journey that we did at, at playing football at Bethel and uh, I mean shoot, it's been years since I've seen you guys or talk to you and right away it's you pick up like we're back in college again so this is awesome it's funny I just had a conversation I was working with a senior group those leadership in another school and and I said to them there will come a point seven weeks from now seven months from now seven years from now where you don't have any connection with some of these people yep and then there will be some of them that you haven't seen in years and it's like you pick up right where you left off because that bond just runs deep, you know? And, um, I think that's the beauty of sports. Number one, it's the beauty of community number two. And I think when you go through the fire together, you learn that there's nothing that can separate you in the end, you know, like, and so, um, I'm so, so glad to see you, man. Absolutely. I mean, it is, it it really actually last night we, we, I have a little two-year-old And, and so we got our bedtime routine and when we pray each night and he's real into folding his hands and my wife and I were just talking after we put him down, just how amazing it is. And maybe it's too simplistic, but just that we, we serve a God who created us for relationships and, and we're wired that way uh, to, uh, to love one another. And as through this process in becoming a dad, you know, there's just different levels of love that you just, just love my little guy like crazy. And it's just so cool that that's how, that's how we're designed is to love one another and love each other and connect. And there's something that, that, that there's, there's a special bond that happens in so many different forms and different relationships. And it's just, uh, it's, it's awesome. You don't hear a podcast that's now three minutes in and three dudes that are college football teammates start in a place like love, but, but the power of that is, is giant. And I, I have so many questions about how that impacts your program um, and how that has impacted all of what we've done, but I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse or maybe we're already there, but John, since you are kind of the host here, (laughs) lead us Oops. let's go back like jamie said let's 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 give a little uh context for our listeners and tell us a little bit about your journey going from playing football at bethel you know you went to mounds view high school correct yep yep grew up in that area uh jamie and i both have had you know this a similar experience where we you know we go off and we play college sports and then we go back to our hometown and we get to coach in the community that gave so much to us, but tell us a little bit about how you got to this place where now you're leading this program in, in a place where, you know, obviously means a lot to you because you, you grew up there and, and have a lot of deep connection there. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it, I don't know where exactly it started. I have an uncle who was a teacher and a coach and, and, um, had, awesome success and growing up, looking up to, to him and the impact that he had, I'd go and follow him around at school when I didn't have school and just to see what he got to do during the day and, and impact kids' lives and go to their games and watch him coach. And um, it just was, there was something really um, entire, I don't know what the word engaging, I- I- intriguing about, man, like, I got to see him use the gifts that God had given him to have this awesome impact. And even though I was young at the time, I just could see there was influence there in what he was doing. 
And so as I got going, and obviously I've always had a passion for sports, I think ever since I was, you know, could could crawl, my parents had said when I was a two-year-old, I'd sit for three hours at a time and listen to John Gordon and Herb Carneal on, on the radio for a Twins game. And they're like, what is going on? These two-year-olds can listen to an entire game. So there's something that just always drew me to competition, especially competition within a team. And so through my experiences, I had just incredible coaches um, starting at Moundsview, played for a guy named Jim Galvin, who was, who was a legend around here. Um, and my favorite thing about Coach Galvin was it didn't matter who you were, you were going to be loved and you were going to be known. And it didn't matter, you know, a guy like Adam Weber, who one of the bigger names go through here, or if you were the third string punter, he was going to love you and care about you. And, and you were going to know that you had value in our program. And I saw that and I was like, if I get an opportunity to coach someday, that's the kind of coach I want to be. I want to be a guy where every single kid is known and valued. And so from Mounds, you going to play at Bethel and just – the incredible coaching staff that we had at Bethel, as you guys know, that um, it's just nothing like the, the culture there um, in being men who um, love the game and love Jesus. And, and you put those two together and, and you're tethered to that, right? You, you, you're tied to that. And, and, and you learn so much about being a man and being a man of God and being a man who's going to live for something, you know, and, 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 and have a life of intention and purpose. And it wasn't just said to us, but I think we all, you know, probably all of us were impacted differently by different coaches, but to see grown men living that out, nobody's perfect. Striving to live that out is, was huge impact on me. Um, we so often need models, right? I mean, so yeah. much, we don't, we don't do what we're told. We rarely understand or remember what we're taught, but we often, often, often follow models. And that model that you're talking about from your high school coach, the Bethel coaches is such a powerful thing. And I, I think I just wanted to pause and hit on this because any coach out there listening, like if you are not modeling the behaviors you desire from your athletes, any leader, in any community, if you are not modeling the behaviors you desire from the people that are following your example, you are not going to get the results you desire, period, so right? So good. And you hit the men that showed us how to be men. And this isn't right. just about being a man, right? They, they were men and we were men that were trying to follow and emulate their lead, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, how can you do that in your community? And I, I think you just hit on something that's absolutely, I needed to stop and say it out loud because I think about it all the time. Yep. No, I, I agree a hundred percent. And, uh, so much of, of what we do now, and we'll get to, um, pro probably get to our program and, and kind of our culture here at Moundsview, but so much of who we are is because of experiences, not just myself, but other guys on our staff have had in our journey. Um, so from there had an amazing, amazing, um, five years, a lot, of, a lot of people take five years for a five degree, and I did. <laughs> and uh, amazing, amazing five years at Bethel. I uh, really couldn't, couldn't ask for a better experience. Um, and then got right into coaching. Um, and I, I never would have thought my first head coaching position would be anything but football. But um, I had an opportunity uh, – to, to coach girls hockey with my uncle who I was referring to earlier. And it was a blast. And really what I found was, because I don't know a lot about hockey, to be honest, I played it. I love the game, but when it came to coaching it, <laughs> I, I would like YouTube drills before practice, you know? And, but what I learned quickly was, and it's the old adage they don't really care what you know until they know how much you care about them. And it didn't matter if it was girls hockey players or no, my football guys, you, it's a relationship business and you got to build those relationships. And then when you do, man, kids are, they're going to go through a freaking wall for you. 
Well, um, then, and, that's, and then, it, and, that's, and then it, it doesn't matter what you're doing, right? It doesn't matter the right. drills or the X's and O's or the scheme. It, none of that matters. And I think before we hit record, we were, Jamie, you were talking a little bit about that because Aaron, you had asked, how did we kind of get together and, and go on this journey? And part of that was talking about X's and O's. This is what we want to do. You know, this is the scheme. And then we realized none of that really mattered. Right. Right. And, and That's once we got to that point, it was like, okay, let's go. You know, yeah. Like, oh, absolutely. I, I tell our coaching staff all the time, um, anybody, cause there's a lot of guys on staff that know more about football than, than I do. And it's not a slight, yeah, we want to grow in our X's and O's and strive to be the best coaches on the field that we can. But especially in today's day and age, anybody can, you can pull up anything and learn X's and O's pretty quickly. I mean, it's just, it's different than probably, you know, obviously years and years ago, but not anybody or not everybody. I think everybody can. It's, are you willing to put in the time that it takes to build these relationships? I mean, for instance, today I had to have some hard conversations with a few kids. It's not fun but that's part of the relationship too. You know, you're not just in, and that was a big coach J thing, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you got to love with a kiss and a kick. Sometimes this, this, that kick isn't always, that's not fun, but that's, I always tell the boys at the end of the conversation, it's because I love and care about you that whatever, you know, the conversation was that we had, to, we had to face this and we, and we had to embrace this conversation. And, and I think guys respect that, you know, than trying to avoid those hard conversations with, with kids. So I guess going back to your original question, the journey, um, coaching at South St. Paul had a blast. And then I had an opportunity um, to, to take over Mounds U girls program. And, uh, and coach, head coach uh, came in with another coach. We did the co-head coach thing, which we worked phenomenal together. We really – uh, balanced each other and our gifts and what we brought to the table, which was pretty unique situation. And, um, and we had a, an awesome amount of success. And I think, you know, we really changed the culture um, in really building a, a family atmosphere in, in building a program that, yeah, we're going to be really, really good or strive to be really good as a hockey team. But we tell the girls all the time, they're going to be moms and wives someday. And, and we wanted to make sure that we were doing everything we could to equip them to uh, be successful beyond high school. And so had an awesome run. Uh, we won a couple conference titles and got to go to state and we made it to number one team in state one year. And, and again, it was not, not necessarily us. We had some really good players, too. But it was, it was uh, getting them to buy into the we before me mindset. And, and when you can get, I don't care what sport it is, when you can get a group of kids to buy into, it's all about the name on the front of the jersey. And, and they're willing to do the nasty, hard, tough things that it takes to be a champion. You can do special things with, with, with any group. Well, and I think that's so important, especially now. I was just talking to um, a family member of mine. They, they have some coaching openings and some teaching openings. And, and it's like, it seems like it's getting in some places, especially rural places, it's harder and harder to find coaches that are, you know, uh, maybe grew up in the coaching tree or, you know, have that background. And, and Jamie, you and I, we've even talked to a few coaches that they're taking on sports because they're athletic and they played, but they don't know. And Aaron, you just said, I didn't really know much about hockey, but I figured it out because I can learn. And, and I think that's an encouragement to those people out there that are listening that are like, man, I don't have any idea. And one of our good friends, Luke, you know, was took on cross country. He was a wrestler, right? He, he didn't know he's not a cross country guy. And all of a sudden he's the head coach. He's like, what do I do? I'm going to figure it out. Right. And he yeah. started with relationships he started yeah. with them, you know, and, and now they've just built, continued to build on that success. And I think that's just in a really important encouragement for, for coaches out there that, Hey, if you start with the relationships, you can figure out the X's and O's. Right. I have a question, Mobes. 
Absolutely. So you talk about building a we before me mentality, talk about building a culture. I think yep. so many of us as coaches want that, right? We want a desire to build culture. Yep. How did you like, and this is a, an hours long, days long, weeks long conversation. So I'm not going to ask you to try and spell it all out for us, but if you had to boil it down to one thing beyond just relationships, cause we've talked about that, like what is something you guys did that you think tipped the scales for you culturally as a program, like in football, in hockey, whatever it was, what is that thing that allows you to, to buy in, right. To have kids yeah. buy in. We talk about it all the time. I got to get this group to buy in. How do we yep. do that? How have you done yeah. it? No, I, I think it's, it, it can be really challenging. I think one of my mantras that I say quite a bit is you get what you praise and, um, and you get what you emphasize. And um, so for instance, in the, in the game of hockey, blocking a shot, a hard puck, it's not fun. And it, your name doesn't go in the newspaper when you do. Um, oftentimes, you know, you have a decision. Do I want to get in front of the puck? It's going to hurt. But I know if it hits me, it's not going in the net. And after the games, I would spend more energy and time pointing out the girls that were willing to sacrifice and put themselves in the line of fire than I would our best players who maybe scored a hat trick that night. Yeah. And the girls understood this, you know, and they, they bought into that, like, wow, there's more than just getting your name in the paper or being the leading scorer or that all state kid. It's that, that little play of getting the puck out of the zone um, against the boards when you're battling against another opponent, like little thing, but we're going to, we're going to spend way more time focusing on, that than the big goal at the end of the game that won us the game. And in, in the game of football, something that we really strive um, to do is we want every single, every single one of our guys is going to feel like they played a huge role on Friday night, whether they stepped inside the lines or not. And how do you do that? Every day after practice, I pick and I try to be really mindful of picking different guys, but guys that I know, um, and I'm not going to just say, you know, give them praise if they just to give them praise. I, I got I want to be mindful and be really intentional and kind of jot down either in my head or else I'll have a piece of paper out there. Like remember to talk about Jack Johnson yeah. and at the end of practice, our starting quarterback, our starting receivers, I want them to know, you know, our scout players who busted it all day to get them ready for Friday night. And we, you know, do a variety of things to honor them, but really, man, because that's not fun. It, it's, we, we talk servanthood is, is one of our core values and it's not easy. We've had some really good teams to be a junior defensive lineman going against our starting offensive alignment guys that are going to college football next year that just come off the ball and smack. And, to do that every day and know you're not going to get any credit for their success on Friday night. Who wants to do that? Yeah. And so you have to find a way to build your culture where kids are like, man, coach saw me. He, he, he sees me and, and we all want to be seen. Right. Well, go back and, to what you started with Mobes known and valued, right? You see them for who they are and what they give. You right. see that they add value and you know their name, you know their effort, you know what an incredible thing that we can do for a kid is to see them, right? Absolutely, and absolutely. I, I love the idea, like as a teacher, names are a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Like don't get somebody's name wrong, like come back in three days and have their names down because like when we can say someone's name and we can tell them who they are, like we have a, an opportunity to connect with them deeply. And yep. I like, as a coach, can you go beyond the name, right? Can you show, can you see them and understand their value? And right. I, what, dude, I, I get goosebumps talking to you because these are the things when I'm, when I'm thinking about how to, how to communicate to coaches, what's really important. Mm -hmm. What's actually of value here? The things that you're saying are 
not just the, they're going to be daughters and wives someday. They're going to be husbands and well, they're already daughters, um, <laughs> wives and mothers someday. They're going to be husbands and, and, uh, dads right. someday. Like, right. It's beyond that stuff. Even it's that you matter here today also, not just because you scored a touchdown or because you got like, it's that's culture building and it's powerful. Yeah. Oh, I, you guys have probably heard and I'll probably screw up the, the, the words, but they talk about how I heard Trent Dilfer talking about just he he coaches high school football now and he's just I love listening to that guy. Me too. He's just, Me too. He's just awesome. And talked about at a conference I was at. He he said something along the lines of your words can are like fire. They can they can cook your food and they can also burn your house down. And how powerful our words are, you know. And as a as a believer, that's a big prayer before practices or games that because the tongue man can be awesome but it can suck too yeah. and it can it can i know i've said things where just right after i'm like you ding dong like so what do you do most? when you, you know, get there what do you do well i think the biggest thing when you're is i've had to, and i think it can be powerful too and i don't mean to put myself but when i could pull a kid aside and sincerely apologize and say man i screwed up like i just lost my cool and for them to hear their head coach any coach, but for me as the head coach and to be able to look a kid in the eyes and tell them that, I, I think they, they, that means a ton to them, you know, and, and that's, and, and you it goes back to what we were talking about with modeling, right? Now we're modeling the humility that when we screw up, we, we can have the humility and have I done it every time? <laughs> no, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to say I have, but I know the times that I have, it's been powerful and and uh, makes me as I'm, I'm sitting here tear up a little bit because I know how much it's meant to some of those kids where I've, you know, and, and on the flip side, we, we try, to, we try to cook our food too. And, and like, cause we know our, our positive comments can, they can change. I mean, I don't mean to sound, it can change a life, but it really can change a, a kid's life if, if you use your words in the right way. So I want to go back to, you, you talked about one of your core values being servanthood. Yep. And, you know, I think as coaches, we all, again, I think it's the model, but it's, we, we, we want to have core values. We may even say we have core values. When we talked to coach Jay, you know, so long ago on this podcast, one of his things was like, Hey, we, we didn't have slogans. We had these things that we lived by. It's a lifestyle. He said, don't let it just be words. Yep. So I have a question for you as you're developing those. Cause I think a lot of coaches struggle with this. It's like, okay, first of all, how do we develop it? Is that coming from you top down or how do you incorporate your team and your other coaches? And two, how do you make sure that you are intentional about you know, um, recognizing those things and, and getting to those things, whether it be in practice, the off season games, so on and so forth. Yeah, it, man, I, I've really gotten into, uh, you know, it's the buzzword and culture, but who, who are we, what do we believe in? What do we stand on? And that's gonna, that's gonna drive our behaviors. Right. And so I think it's really important that you're very clear about it. And also important that once you establish it, you fight like crazy for it because it's hard. And especially if you want to have the right kind of culture, um, it's something you got to go to battle for. Cause it's, it can, if you hold yourself to a stand, our mantra is uncommon men. We have a big banner that we run under and I tell the boys all the time. And I tell our coaching staff, we can't be frauds. Like that can't be, Oh, it's just something that, you know, back to football night, the coach Mober gets up and it sounds really good, but we, if we're not living it out, then it means crap. I mean, just means it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's empty. And so it means a ton to me that, all right, we are going to be who we say we are as a, as a staff, as a program. Um, I, we had a, I do a mom's brunch uh, we just had it this weekend and it's awesome. And all these moms come and we talk about football and, and um, 
get to share about our culture. And I tell them, you know, and I, and I want to be able to look in their eyes and say, these are words. This is truly who we are. And it's neat to hear back from our alumni moms. I'll have them write something out. It just, it, it gives affirmation that we do have a, a group of guys, both, both the players and staff that are striving to live out that uncommon, that set apart life as, as men. And so to answer your question, I struggled with values the first year I, I, I got the head coaching job about a month before the season started. And so there's all these things I wanted to get done and I knew values were important. I'm like, all right, I'm going to create a leadership council and then I'm going to have, we're just going to create a list of values. So I had like 12 values. And I think by the end of the season, I didn't, I, I know I didn't know more than a couple of them and I guarantee our kids didn't know what all of them were. So I'm like, all right, we got, we got to re uh, shape and relook how, how we go about this because I, I do believe it's important to know there's so many great values out there, but what, what is going to be what Mustang football is all about. And so that's before uncommon men came about. And I kind of stole that from, from Tony dungeon Dungy, just, uh, you know, wide is the path and, and, and narrow is the gate, you know, and are you going to be on the wide path? Or are you going to be on the narrow gate? And are you going to be willing to do hard things? Are you going to do easy things? Because if you embrace doing hard things, it's going to lead to a lot of great things. If you embrace doing easy things, it's usually almost always going to lead to some negative consequences. And so we, to make it easy, um, you know, and maybe it's cheesy, but we, we use STANG, S-T-A-N-G as our five values and and so what we go off of is is servanthood for the yes um and just believe you, you want to be great the greatest leader of all time jesus was the ultimate servant you know and you want to have influence and have an impact you better know how to serve other people because it's hard <laughs> it's really hard and uh next one was was team and so we so sorry for service how, how do we live that out our, our guys have decals on their helmet and they do eight hours of community service um, in the community over the summer. They, they can run ideas by me and then they got to give eight hours unpaid of their time to earn those decals that they get to wear on Friday night. And most get it done. There's, there's always a few we got to work with and come up with some really creative ideas to get them there. But uh, that's, that's just a way to show the community, man. And I tell everybody, if they got their decals, they've, they've given back. And, and what our kids find when they serve other people, there's a joy that comes that they didn't know. You know, we just live in a world that's just so 100 miles an hour. Our kids are doing so many things and they're so busy and we're all pretty consumed with ourselves, with their social media world at times. And we do a night, uh, it's called We Are One. And I invite all the uh, uh, adapted students come out and and we put on a football camp for them. It's the best night of the year. Yeah. Our kids, uh, it's the end of our practice. It's usually they're tired. And honestly, we've done it every year. I think since I've been the head coach and <laughs> even myself, I go into a con, oh my gosh, I'm end of the day, tired. And kids, every single year, we walk off the field and kids come up to the coach, that was awesome. Yeah. I go, oh, gosh, I know. I, I get tears every year because you get to see – it's just beautiful. You get to see the parents of these students who never have football. You know, like ne their kids aren't – go back to being seen. And when yeah. they got a bunch of football players loving on them and caring for them, and, and then it's not just a one-night thing, and that's my challenge to my guys. <laughs> yeah, you did it for an hour. Awesome. Yeah. Now do it tomorrow. And do it the next day and that's being uncommon right and so that's just a small example of just kind of driving home that servanthood and and finding that there's so much joy you know coach jay would always say you know you get back what you you put into it you know and how much are you willing to put into it and and you're you're gonna get it way back way more than you put into it yeah and so uh, uh, sorry, I'm kind of rambling. No, but it's unbelievable stuff. Mo, just keep T, going. <laughs> T is is we always value the team. The Mustangs come first, and that there's a lot of different ways that we incorporate that. As I've kind of shared, 
you know, really putting a high value on our scout teams, putting value on we, our, 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 our big line that coaches across the board at every level, we before me, you know, and it can almost always go back to that we before me, um, you know, and I, I think of a guy and I use him as an example who we know, Bull Schuler, and, and I played the same position as Bull at, at, on D-line. And that is the most ultimate at, we before me dude that like I've ever been around. And so I tell the guys about him all the time. And so we try to use examples, whether it's a guy like Bull that they don't know, you know, they don't know who Bull is, but they've heard me talk about him, you know, or guys that they know are showing them clips of different examples uh, that we can tie in. We have a uh, um, Mustang men time every Monday. And that's another way that I can tell parents, hey, well, most teams across the st state are getting ready for a big game. I don't care if it's state tournament like we were in a couple of years ago. We're still going to have our, our our Mustang men every Monday. And, and we take about 45 minutes and just focus on character. It's nothing about football. And it's just about being a man of character. And, and, and so we drive home these values like being a we before me dude. Uh, the A is accountability. It's a hard one, man. It's, it's I think, uh, so, so important. But to be men uh, accountable for our decisions, whether it's I had a kid this morning, he decided sleep in sounds better than going to 7 a.m. workout. And then we go through the conversation about being, being accountable for our actions. And now I, the one thing about accountability, though, that I'm really trying to get better at is it, it has such a negative connotation. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, and to use accountability in a positive light is something I want to get better at. Cause I, in my head, it's like accountability is our work ethic and the process to be in the champion and to be in the champion in life. Well, yeah, but there's a lot of positive things there too. Yeah. So, well, and that's, and that's helping them focus on the growth, right? I mean, instead yeah. of it being an outcome based, you missed the workout, here's the punishment, right? Hey, let's have this conversation. Here's Absolutely. what happened here's why it's important and you, you get the choice, right? Yep. But now you have, you still have a choice. Are you going to grow from this or, you know, are you going to shrink away from it? But right. Anyway. Right. Ahead. No, it's, it's so good. Uh, and I, I still, from, you know, sometimes you get these acronyms, you got to force a word in there. And I, <laughs> and I stole it, I stole it from uh, the gophers necked on. And what it means is basically, uh, controlling your 20 square feet, you know, and he, he, I, I love, I don't know if you guys follow any of Tim and Brian Kite stuff, but they've worked with Ohio State football team and, and just a lot of stuff on culture and they have an equation E plus R equals O. And we talk about that. That's another one of our, uh, our, our acronyms or that, that we use quite a bit and it's event plus response equals your outcome. And so you're going to have an event. Something's going to be thrown at you that's out of your control. Man, if, if that equation hasn't been more applicable in the last 15 months, I don't know. I'm kidding. You know, yeah. There's tons of stuff that's going to hit us in a lot of different ways. I was listening actually last night to Jared Hall's uh, podcast with you guys and just About how ago, amazing yeah. how they've, yeah, that's E plus R equals O right there. Yeah. I mean, how they've pivoted and, you know, while well, you could, be soft and feel bad for yourself and oh uh, this sucks where you go all right i'm gonna i'm gonna lean into this sucker here you know yeah. and i'm gonna i choose my response nobody chooses my response you know and and when you get to choose that response that's going to dictate your outcome that's why football is awesome because yeah. shoot man we're gonna Next suck play. time <laughs> in the game we're gonna fumble yeah. we're gonna throw yeah. picks and and the to not be shocked by that, but to see that, that's what's great. I think I had 20 guys on staff and nine are former Bethel football players. And so it's like so much of what we got at Bethel, like, can give all right, again. let's go. Yeah. Like yeah. defense, you get to go pick your boys up. Let's go. Yeah. Like, and, and you flip that, that, that mind shift and, and you can use that to life. I mean, well, and so much of life is response, right? It has very little to do with the actual thing that happened. So like the thing that happened is good, bad, indifferent. It really doesn't matter until you respond to it. Right. And if yep. you, you know, and, and one of the things I use with teams all the time is like, 
if your doctor comes out and says you're having a reaction to the medication, like, do you want to react and react negatively because you weren't prepared for a potential outcome? Right. Or do you want to, if the doctor comes out and says, Oh, the patient's responding to the treatment, like just think about the difference between those words, react or respond. Right. And you want to respond because you're prepared, right? Yeah. Yeah, Event plus response equals outcome, probably a good one event plus reaction outcome, probably a negative one. And and Mm -hmm. man, that's yeah, anyway, good. that's, that's right. awesome, Wags. G, G. Uh, G, you, you can't be a, a former Bethel player and not have grateful. In yeah. There. And, and I just think, you know, so much of life and life is hard, uh, you know, and in, in, in a lot of different ways at times, but they all kind of tie together. That grateful piece, we talk about attacking each day and every day is an opportunity, man. And, and so really focusing and, and when you can, focus on being grateful. Uh, you know, I, I worked at a, a camp with students with special needs and I'll never forget um, this guy, Eddie, he was in a wheelchair and he asked me one night, he, he just completely kind of knocked me off, you know, just where my mind was at. You know, I, I can't remember if I was still, I think I must've still been playing at Bethel. And he said, Mobs, tell me what it's like to run out on a football field. <sighs> uh, I'm like, <laughs> I've never really thought about that because I was just took it for granted, whether it was in high school or college, getting to run out and be with my brothers. And, and he's asking me to try to articulate in words what it's like to run on a football field. And, oh, that was, that, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And, and so, um, so I think just being grateful, man, it just it, grateful and enthusiasm. We, we talk about bringing the juice all the time. And, and I think they just kind of tie together when you're grateful, you can just like, all right, let's go, baby. It's Tuesday. Let's go. Let's, it's Monday. Let's go. It's Wednesday. Cause those are kind of the harder days in the football season. You know, you're far away. And then it's easy to have juice on Thursday. Or, uh, I got that Coach J piece where I get teary. Uh, but can you have juice on, on a work day? You yeah. know, and, and that's a challenge to our boys. And, and Well, it's, we a, it's a challenge it. to us all, Mobs, right? Like, can, yeah. you bring, can you bring that on a day when the outcome is really far away? You know, Absolutely. like – because the, the outcome is rarely known at at a certain point. You know, I think the beauty of sports is that there's a, there's a finiteness to it all, right? We get to go and do this on Friday. We get to go and do this on Saturday. There's an, there's a thing to look forward to Mm -hmm. at some point in life that kind of stops, right? We get this, Mm -hmm. there are, there are intervals that have pretty obvious marking points, but only in retrospect, we don't get to see them up front. And so like, how do you continue to bring the juice Mm -hmm. with enthusiasm, with gratitude, like controlling the 20 freed around you, making other people accountable, you know what I mean? Building in this team mentality and then going and serving others, right? How do you do that Mm -hmm. today, Mm -hmm. (laughs) tomorrow, every single day, even though you don't know what it's going to get you? Yeah. Uh, High school football players, high school hockey players, whatever. No, I'm, I'm just saying it. I'm just saying it as a oh. challenge to anybody okay, out there good. because like, <laughs> I mean, there are no answers here, right? It's, it's right. stinking tough. Yeah. But when yeah. you live I, like that, man, and I, I I'm just going to say this for anybody out there. Aaron Moberg is a man who is uncommon. He lives this stuff. I haven't seen you in six or seven years, probably, or, you know, since probably 2017, when we got to go out on the field at halftime together. Right. But like you are a man who lives this way and it's easy to see why your program is able to, to maintain and have those values because you model this stuff. I'm going to go back in again. If you're not modeling it, you're struggling. And Aaron, I I know this about you because you are a dude and, uh, I've, I've just been, I've been grateful to have this conversation with you because it, it continues to re-engage me and challenge me in the purpose of what we do and talking about living eyes up. Well, oh, it goes uh, both ways. So. Yeah. Uh, Bobes, I, I'm, I'm still, 
I got the goosebumps. I'm still got tears in my eyes from the question about Eddie and, and the, that gratefulness piece just mm. smacked me right in the face, man. And if, if you're listening and that doesn't challenge you to figure out what you're grateful for today and every day, like just think about that. And I'm going to start crying too. Cause I have the coach J two loves, <laughs> but, um, but man, Every day is an opportunity, and and Aaron, I thank thank you for reminding us of that and and sharing about your program and what you're doing. And the thing, the other thing that I kept thinking about is, you know, you you talked about all of those values, but I to me the thing that comes back is that first one is servanthood because that's tied in. All of those other things are a part yeah. of serve, right? Yeah, team. Yeah accountability yeah. that's about service you know controlling your space and then being man. <laughs> all of that is about serving others and giving your gifts and right. and expecting nothing back right well and it's just that that service piece i tell these guys all the time it's because a lot of them there they will get married someday and man your marriage is going to go really really well if you approach each day like how can i serve my wife today and if you can I, th I think just like as athletes, you build muscle memory. I think you can build that, that servant muscle, you know, and I have a long ways to go. And, and, and in that, you know, and I don't think any of us ever fully get there. We always have that, that selfishness creeps back in, but not just as a, as a husband, but as a, as a dad, I mean, when you got, we we got a little guy he's almost two and then we got another one any day now and it's like there's a there's a lot of diapers man i had no idea how many diapers there are and like you know like i don't know i don't want to get too crude but it's like gosh you get that the smell and you're like all right do i sit and wait and see if my wife notices it first or do i just take care of business here? you know like and that's servanthood you know or when they when he's crying in the middle of the night do i just do I fake snore like I'm in a deep sleep or do I get my butt out of bed so my wife can, sleep? you know, and, and it's, it's those moments that we got to laugh and they are funny, but they're also opportunities to, to serve our wives too, you know, and, and serve our, our kids. But that's why, you know, our experiences at Bethel and what we do and just that we are building that muscle and, and we got to keep building it too. We had a guest on recently named uh, Alex Hutchinson, and, and in his book, he said that all training is brain training, right? Any type of work we do is building that muscle memory in our minds, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all changing the way that we think and respond. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. how you're training, if it's out running 60 miles a week, right? Or if it's, I'm going to wake up and serve my wife right now. It's changing your next response right? It's changing the next behavior that you have. And if you choose not to, that's also influencing your next behavior. It's a lot easier next time. Right. And, uh, uh you, you have done an amazing job of living that. And I, I aspire to be more like you mobs every wow. day, man. Uh, <laughs> so, and I, it's, it's amazing how much and we talk about Bethel a lot on the podcast and especially when we bring former athletes on, but here's the thing that I will say that place changed us so we could change others, right? Yeah. That place changed us so that we could change others is your program coaches out there listening is your program, a place that changes the people you encounter, the athletes that you bring in so that they can go and have a similar impact in their world. Mustang football is doing that. I'm not saying it's perfect because we know that we're going to fall yeah. short regularly. But yep. can you create a program like that? And uh, uh, thank you for the work you do in, in developing that in, in the place where you are. So thanks for coming on, Mobes. We love you, man. Hey, love you guys too. It's been a blast. Uh, let's not make it so long next time. Agreed. Agreed. Hey, let's do it again. Absolutely. I'd love to. I love talking about this. This is life-giving stuff for me to, to talk with you guys. So it's great. Thanks for having me, guys. You bet. Thanks again to Aaron Moberg, head football coach at Moundsview High School. And our former teammate, Jamie, what a blessing and an honor to have him. And, man, the juice. We talk about bringing the juice all the time. And he brought the juice. And, and if in that, it can't be fake juice, right? It can't be fake excitement or words or things. And 
the thing that I really, you know, got out of this thing is, you know, I, I just talked about it is the gratefulness, grateful that we get to do what we do just to use our skills and abilities to impact the people around us. And you as a listener out there, what skills and abilities do you have? What area are you serving other people? And be grateful that you've been put in this position to go and do that thing and, and, and attack it. He talks about attacking the day. Go attack whatever it is for you today, whatever skill, whatever gift you have, go give it and be grateful. Yeah, I just, how do we as people live eyes up, right? I mean, like we talk about it all the time and it's a challenge to us. It's not that we're preaching, right? It's a challenge to us. And I, I am so grateful for Aaron's challenge to us to live that way, to live with integrity, be accountable to the person that we say that we are all the time. And, uh, man, it's powerful stuff. And I, I, uh, I, I wish nothing but the best for their program and the growth for their, for Mounds View football. But I also wish that you guys out there listening can hear the things that he says and say, that can be where we are too. Let's lead so that it is those things also. Um, and when you do, people will show up. People will show up and give more than you ever thought possible. Thanks for joining us. Help us spread the word. Rate, review, subscribe, share it with somebody that you care about. And as always, live eyes up.